as this is a very nice section for mathematics. I enjoy proving identities very much. Uh, we will have another video on this. So, another three examples. This is from exercise 5, with, uh, number 2, number 4, number 10 from the Via Africa textbook. So, let's have a look. Okay, the right hand side is simple enough. We're just going to leave it as it is for now. Uh, then the left hand side is the one we're going to work with. Now it's important to notice here that we have a denominator as, uh, of sine x minus cos x, but on the right hand side the denominator is just 1. In other words, sometime dear, during the solution of this identity while solving it, we're going to have to cancel out a sine x minus cos x from the numerator. So that's something that you will see as we go along. So first of all, are there any identities we can apply? Well, there's only one identity we can apply, and that is the squared identity. 1 is equal to sine squared x plus cos squared x. So in this case, we can do it that way. We say sine squared x plus cos squared x minus 2 sin x times cos x. Divided by sin x minus cos x. So it's not as clear yet, but if I rewrite this expression in the following order, it will become very clear that we are working with a trinomial. So here we have a trinomial. Sine squared x minus 2 sine x cos x plus cos squared x. And if you factorize, it will become sine x minus cos x in the bracket times sine x minus cos x in a bracket. Now we can cancel out one of these brackets. And the final answer will be sine x minus cos x, which is equal to the right hand side. So the next number is number 4. And it looks intimidating, but this is really an easy question, and you will see what I mean uh, when we're done with the process. So the right hand side is is uh, the simpler side of the two, so we're just going to leave it as is. We're going to work with the left hand side. Now there's certain basic principles that we can follow every time. It works very well, and one of those is to work towards a common fraction, just one single fraction by using a lowest common denominator. If we look on the, at the right hand side, you can see there's only a single fraction on the right hand side. On the left hand side we've got two fractions, so it's logical to assume that we're going to have to work towards a single fraction. So the right hand side, that's the very first thing we're going to do. We're going to get the lowest common denominator. So this will become 1 plus sine x times 1 plus sine x minus bracket 1 minus sine x times 1 minus sine x. Now common denominator will be 1 minus sine x in a bracket times 1 plus sine x. Now let's simplify the numerator. If you multiply these two brackets with each other, it will become 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x minus bracket. Remember the bracket. Multiplying these two brackets with each other, 1 minus 2 sine x plus sine squared x 
And in this case, it will be beneficial to multiply the two factors of the denominator. Normally, I leave that all the way to the end. But seeing where we're going and understanding that this is the difference between two squares, um, just factorized, we can multiply. And I know we're going to end up with 1 minus sine squared x, which is an identity which is equal to cos squared x. So this will become 1 minus sine squared x. Okay, let's multiply the negative in, so 1 plus 2 sine x plus sine squared x minus 1 plus 2 sine x minus sine squared. And we apply our identity, the squared identity. And this will become cos squared x, which is good news for us. Now, we just simplify the numerator. 1 minus 1 is 0. 2 sine x plus 2 sine x is equal to 4. Sine x, sine squared x minus sine squared x is 0. And this is equal to our right hand side. Let's have a look at number 10. It does look intimidating, but yes, like many things in mathematics, the answer is equal to 1. Uh, so let's start and work with it and see if we can get the solution. So first of all, I see tan x squared, tan x squared, tan x squared, which all of them can be rewritten in terms of sine squared x and cos squared x. And there's a sine squared x, so that's definitely what I'm going to do. Uh, let's see. So this becomes 1 plus 1 over sine squared x over cos squared x times sine squared x over cos squared x minus sine squared x. All of that divided by tan squared x. I'm just going to leave the tan squared x as is for now, uh, and just to save up some space. So the first bracket, if you multiply the reciprocal over here, it becomes 1 plus cos squared x divided by sine squared x. On the right hand side, that's, I mean the right bracket, I will work towards a common denominator. And to get that as a single fraction, so this will become sine squared x minus sine squared x times cos squared x divided by cos squared x. Now the left bracket. Oh, also work towards a common like common denominator, uh, one single fraction which will become sine squared x plus cos squared x please remember to add the tan squared x And our common denominator here would be sine squared x over here. I will take out a common factor, which is sine squared x over 1. And what is left then is 1 minus cos squared x. over cos squared x, all of that divided by tan squared x. Okay, now let's see what takes place here. There is an identity which will become 1. Here we can apply the same identity 
this will become sine squared x and over here those two can cancel out so this whole expression will simplify to 1 times sine squared x over cos squared x divided by tan squared x and we know that sine squared x divided by cos squared x is equal to tan squared x and that is equal to 1 which is equal to the right hand side.